Hey everybody and welcome back to Big Minnow Mike's. We've got a very spooky Halloween special for you guys. Now today is opening day for trout season and usually that is when every Tom, Dick and Harry comes out. You got amateur hour, everyone's on the water. Anybody who comes out for one day a year to trout fish comes out on this day. But eerily enough, there's nobody on the water. There's like two canoes and like five dudes. Listen, I'm not gonna complain about that. I'm just gonna get out there and see what we can find. So, stick around, we'll see if we can catch fish. Well, here you go. Oh, looks like that old guy over there's got one. This is where the fun begins. This is when uh, you've got one, two, three, four. You've got about 15 dudes on the bank. Literally, nope, he didn't get anything. Literally standing five feet apart from each other. Here we go. Oh, ass hooked him. <clears throat> All right, folks, here we go. First one of the year. Kind of got a lucky snag on that one, honestly. Didn't even, uh, didn't even hook his hook. I mean, that thing just came right out. But, uh, yep, first trout of the year. Our first stock trout of the season. Okay, there it is. Okay. They're just right over here by this log. I don't see them now, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Nice. That's where I wanted to go. Perfect. Oh, damn it. Damn it. Man, it was in his mouth. Yeah, you know what? I think we're going to stay here for a minute. I'm going to get one of these. I'm going to master the art of slingshotting and uh, see if I can't get that. Get this little puppy. This is a good little. Oh, dang it. Come on. I hate one. This is like frustration level 15 right here when you got no room to cast, you got a nine foot rod in a six foot place. There is about a hundred easier ways of doing this. I mean, I better, oh, nice, look at this. Of course my rod just, oh, frick. I mean, this is just, about as bad of a situation as you want to get in. All right, but well, after about 10 minutes of bubbling through weeds and getting my fly caught in a tree and my pole falling apart, we're going to uh, move over here just slightly. I saw one over here a little bit ago. Let's just kind of put it over there, see if we can't. I literally had one, I saw it go in its mouth. Went to set the hook, and I just pulled it right out of his mouth, so. Well, lucky for me, this trout wants to be caught because he does not, he's not leaving that spot. So I'm gonna keep slingshotting in there. Okay, here we go. Well, I think the scariest thing about this Halloween episode is my inability to catch fish. Um, I did get the one, although I did hook him on his fin, but you know, hey, I have fish in the nets, a fish in the nets, so I'm not going to complain about that. But uh, man, I've been going after just a whole cluster of them doing this little slingshot approach and have had zero luck. I've actually physically seen the fly go in the fish's mouth and then I literally set the hook and pull it right out. So, uh, I'm gonna give it another few minutes and uh, if I don't find anything, that's okay. You know what, I got one for the day. That's, uh, that's pretty darn good, so. Um, if I don't catch anything else, stay tuned. Fishing Flashbacks coming up next.
In this vision flashback, we're going to go back to the mid-1970s. Specifically, we're going to take a look at this 1976 Cabela's catalog. And you're probably asking yourself, why do you look like a fat Burt Reynolds? Well, the answer is it's Halloween, and I figured I want to dress up as probably the best cinematic character of all time, the Bandit. And then we got old Burt here, Bassin Burt, and he's dressed up as old Fred. And, well, he didn't really have to do too much, but oh well. Anyways, stick around. We'll see what's inside the catalog. Now, I'll start by saying that I haven't looked at this catalog in probably about a year, so this will be kind of like looking at it again for the first time. You can find these on eBay. They're anywhere between 5 to 20 bucks. Certainly less desirable than what a Bass Pro Shop catalog of this year would be. Uh, and you'll see why when we open this up. Um, you know, it's mostly black and white. It's not as many pages. Not, you know, quite as exciting as the Bass Pro catalogs of the time. But still, a fun, affordable little catalog. And uh, certainly packed with uh, some fishing history in here. So why don't we go ahead and just dig right in. So we'll see the first page here. And you'll notice a lot of the catalog is like this. I'm going to try to adjust the lighting slightly. Get a little bit less glare if we can. I don't know if that helped or not, but whatever. Just for the sake of time, we're going to roll through it. You'll see a lot of the images on here are artist renderings or pictures that someone drew, which I think is really cool. So the first part of the catalog, uh, if I remember correctly, is mostly just rods and reels. But the artwork is just really, really neat. Got some Garcia stuff here. Obviously, Garcia was pretty big in Fenwick. I mean, those were huge brands. Still are today. But, I mean, look at all these. Yeah, there's no actual pictures. I mean, these, someone drew that out. I mean, that is really cool. And I've got some of these old reels, too, and they look pretty spot on. We'll just kind of breeze through here. Now, I mean, this is cool to look at all the rods and reels. Um, I prefer to see, you know, what they look like in the Bass Pro catalog because those are generally kind of put out on display. And, I mean, it looks really nice. And this is cool, but um, you, you can definitely tell the difference between this and a Bass Pro. Now, this is where I think it gets fun is taking a look at the, uh, the different worms and soft plastics. Now, let's see, I don't know if I can zoom in. I'll try to get this up here. But you can see, for example, like flip tail worms and some of these leeches and the lizards. You know, this is where I don't think that uh, Cabela's did it justice because the colors of 1976 were, I mean, they were outstanding. You had your, your blues, your deep reds, uh, your grapes, uh, um, all sorts of just, you know, very vibrant colors, and they just kind of did a, a black and white picture of it, which it's still fun to look at on here, but like here we go, the old super frog, you got some of that there, and then you got, uh, I mean, some of your poppers, your, your top waters all right here. So here's like a thin fin, for example. Now, which is funny, I didn't see the uh, thin fin listed in the Bass Pro catalog, of 76 so 76 see that a million times fast okay here we go so we'll just keep on kind of rolling through here here's the depot now they have a really cool spread on the depot on the 76 catalog all the different colors which really craw was i mean i should i shouldn't say all the different colors craw was the main color but um then you got your rebels here but you know what's cool about this is that you can kind of see there's some texture to some of these. Um, so they did a really good job of drawing out that texture um, like, like they have on the real one. Then they got some of these spoons. You got your maps, your red eye. This one's kind of given a little bit of an action of the spoon. Your Uncle Josh right here, or some of your uh, floating bait right there. This, well, there's an actual picture right there. That's one that someone didn't draw out. And then you get into some of the, the flies. Then we get over to the, the line. Another one of my favorite parts 
old school tackle boxes. I love old tackle boxes, old Planos, Bass Bosses, uh, Rebel. I mean, you name it, Fenwick. There's so many different great uh, old school tackle boxes. They're just, they're just a ton of fun. I know I'm a total dork. All right. There you go, WD-40. Got it all. It's your one-stop shop here. All right, then we get into the knife section. Get your saws, your axes. And here we go. Oh, so we've got a couple color pages here. And this looks like they got some decoys. Uh, this is mostly clothes. So you got your, your water boots. Yeah, you know, we got your jackets. Here's the uh, the form here. It looks like someone kind of filled this out. So this would have been back in the 70s. Uh, so whoever had this before, he, let's see, what was he? He was looking to get in a tent, gasoline stove. He was getting a trail pack. Looked like this guy was getting ready to go camping. He got a sleeping bag and all sorts of stuff. Um, apparently he didn't make his camping trip because he didn't fill out the, or send in the form, so... All right, look at these shirts. I'm, those are awesome. I want that shirt. These are sweet. See, they need to bring stuff back like this. I'd dress like that all the time if they sold it. Love that. Very cool. I love these old school life jackets right here. These are sweet with the plaid on them. Got your cowboy hat, standard issue for 76. Here's the sleeping bags. That's probably old Ben was looking for one of those for his camping trip there. Let's see some backpacks. And that's another noticeable difference between the Cabela's catalog and the Bass Pro catalog at the time. Bass Pro obviously very heavy with just fishing lures, worms, rods, reels, uh, line, etc. And this is kind of just an all outdoors. Uh, so you've got the fishing stuff, you've got the camping. So it's a little bit of anything and everything outdoors, which is pretty cool. Those are some pretty sweet. Uh, oh, look at this. It's a dressing room for your camper topper. Man, I wonder if you could find one of those today. I bet that's a pretty penny. That's pretty sweet. I'd love to give an old truck with a camper topper. That's pretty awesome. Here's the old uh, Coleman lanterns right here. I'm originally from Wichita. That's a Coleman. Coleman's a Wichita company. I don't think they are anymore though. Let's see. You got some stuff to make your trout, so nice little day on the water. Cook your trout when you're done. Some old school igloo coolers. Another one of my things. I, I just love to collect old coolers. I think they're just a ton of fun. It looks like you got your your kind of your uh, party, uh, whatever those are, party bucket. There's a there's a nylon head net. This guy's smoking a pipe inside that too, which <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Got some shades. Here we go. You got uh, some inflatable boats and canoes. Here's your trolling motors. They have a price on these? Yeah, look at these. You know what? You can still buy a trolling motor today for a hundred bucks. Looks like those have not changed all that much. Fish finder, depth finders. I guess it's probably more depth finder than fish. Here's your CB radio. Got to have one of those. Then you have to have the world's longest antenna to attach to whatever you're connecting it to, whether that's your boat or your Trans Am, your Chevy Blazer. There you go, get, some, get your bow. Oh, those are mold makers right there. You got some swivels, and then you got kind of some boring stuff. Hooks right here. Spinning blades. I 
and it looks like they've got some rod blanks if you want to make your own custom rods here. And then you got the old pistol grips. Why don't they have these? These are so cool. I don't know why. I don't know when that went out of style to not use those anymore, but I, I love those. And that's pretty much it. I mean, so, you know, about a quarter of what a Bass Pro, if not less, uh, catalog is. And as you can see, most of it is black and white. A um, couple color pages, but it's pretty cool to see it. Um, so, and then you can see here, you got your little depth finder right there and your maps, your reel. I mean, so this these guys must have paid a little extra to, to get the back page full color ad, but there it is. Your spring summer 1976 catalog all right there so uh this must have been geared more towards maybe uh the fishermen up north i'm sorry i don't even know where cabela's is out of it probably would say this somewhere but just judging by the fish on the cover i'd say this is oh it's out of nebraska huh well there you go all right guys well there it is hope you enjoyed the episode and uh until next time we'll see you on the water